Hello and welcome, dear friends. I am Nicole Beecham, and this is the Energetic Pathway Podcast, Journey Back to Yourself. I invite you to join me each week as we explore stories, insights, and resources through the lens of vulnerability and authenticity with a little bit of humor along the way. Let's dive into today's topic together. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about self-honoring, which is a key part of what we've been talking about for the last several episodes on self-love. But before we dive into today's topic, I'd like to do a little bit of grounding. So if you're not driving, close your eyes. And if you are driving, please keep your eyes open and just imagine in your mind with your eyes open. (laughs) So close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and then out. Now imagine your feet are firmly planted on the earth. So bare feet on the ground. And then imagine roots growing out from your feet into the earth, grounding you, planting you, securing you. Just like a tree, a tree is rooted into the earth, but when the wind blows, the leaves still move, the branches still sway. But the consistency and the foundation of the tree and those roots holds it in place. So let's ground into our centering, into the present moment, clearing our mind, letting go as much as we're able of worries about the future, let go of our to-do list, let go of ruminating and processing the past and just be here together in this present moment. So as we get started, I wanted to share a quote by Chris Carr, and it's accepting yourself is about respecting yourself. It's about honoring yourself right now, here today, right in this moment. It feels like that ties in really well for what we've been talking about over the last several episodes with self-love, self-compassion, self-acceptance, and self-forgiveness. And when we're talking about honoring ourselves, it can become quite difficult really quickly because we are traditionally patterned in the society in general to basically think that if we are honoring ourselves and that means other people are not getting what they need, or we think we have to ignore all of our wants and needs and desires in order to meet the needs of others. And at the end of the day, we tend to believe that if we honor ourselves, we're not honoring others. And I'm just here to tell you that you can do both. You can honor yourself and honor others at the same time. In fact, the more you honor yourself, the better you're able to actually honor others. So what exactly is self-honoring? What does that mean? It's basically recognizing and believing in the significance and the importance of your needs, of your feelings, of your beliefs, and of your desires. What you need, regardless of if you think it's too much, is valid. What you feel, even if you feel like you're feeling too deeply, or you're feeling like your feelings are not logical, they're still valid. What you believe It matters, it's important, it's significant, and it's valid. And what you desire, that's unique to you as an individual. Everyone is different, and just because somebody else desires something doesn't mean that's what your desire is. And likewise, other people are not able to put their desires on you unless you allow them. They don't have that power. So honoring yourself means tapping into the core truths about who you are, Asking for what you need when you need it. Understanding the other person may say no. That's their right. That's how they can honor themselves. But you can still ask. Feeling what you feel when you feel it. And no, that doesn't mean going around yelling at people or dishonoring others or putting people down. That's not what that means. It means acknowledging what you are feeling. 
And this does not come with blaming other people. This isn't shaming other people. This should not be done in a form of manipulation or control. This is simply just saying, right now, I am feeling triggered. And I'm getting really small. And I feel like I'm not safe. So notice, and what I just said, isn't blaming anyone else. I didn't use the word, you made me or because of you, or because of your actions, or because of your feelings, because that that ultimately isn't helpful. You're just naming, you're stating, you're acknowledging and outlining what you're feeling. And we're going to do an entire episode soon on safe people, because there are ultimately safe and unsafe people. And honoring yourself is sometimes going to mean not opening up your heart and not sharing with unsafe people. And Brock and I both have a good bit to share on that. But for now, the most important part for you to understand is you are worthy of honor, honoring yourself. And just like we've talked about in previous episodes, you cannot expect others to meet that need for you, just like you cannot meet that need for others. So should others honor you? Absolutely. Should you honor others? Absolutely. But your number one job is to honor yourself, to be there for yourself to compassionately love yourself, to witness yourself, which means witnessing your feelings, witnessing the different parts of you that may feel small or may feel young or may feel defensive or may feel frustrated or may feel like, I just want to quit my job and just go have fun. I just need a break. It's listening and witnessing those parts from a centered place where you get to be the adult in your body and say, yeah, I see you. I see that you're sad. I see that you're hurt. I see that you just want to quit our job and go have fun. I see that. So what I hear you saying, little part inside of me, is that you're tired. You need rest and you want us to go laugh. You want us to go play. What if I make time for that? What if I make time today to Go out into the woods and just let you play, let you pick up sticks, let you make a design with flowers or leaves around you, go searching for rocks, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be out in nature. I say that just because that's, that's my happy place. That's where I like to go to feel connected and to feel free. It's so freeing for me. For you, that may be literally hitting golf balls or going to work out in the gym. Or maybe literally playing, playing a game, whether it's by yourself or with friends, playing video games. Or maybe what's freeing for you is just taking a walk or going and playing with animals, petting an animal. Whatever that freedom looks like for you, being able to name that you need that, to hear those parts that are begging and craving for you to listen to them, and then to actually take action to honor yourself. And a lot of times this is going to start with a sacred pause, which means stopping. (laughs) It's stopping the hustle and bustle, listening to yourself, listening to your body so that you know what you're feeling, so that you know what you need, so that you can take that action. So this morning for me, it's probably a prime example is... I do a good bit of consulting. I'm also a professor and obviously I'm a mom and also working on this podcast. And this morning I just needed rest. So I did. So I I rested. And then once I was rested and felt grounded and centered, I ended up deciding to outline a podcast, this episode actually. And then I just decided, you know what feels right to go record this podcast because that's what I wanted to do. It's like, yes, I have a to-do list of stuff that, that I need to get done. But when I honor myself, when I stay in flow, which we'll talk more about soon, everything else is easier. All of that work I need to get done, now that I'm honoring myself, now that I outlined the podcast, and now that I'm sitting here recording it for you and for me, When I record, these are also for me. This is very healing for me as well. That's honoring my needs so that I can do all these things that I have to do. So I can fulfill all of my responsibilities. 
So that starts with a pause. That starts with stopping, breathing, grounding, listening to your body. Listening, what do you need? And I just want to caveat, and we will have another episode on this soon as well. It's hard to do that when you're first getting back into your body. And so this isn't something that you may be able to do every day or multiple times a day. Start small, even if it's once a week. Even if you commit to yourself every Saturday, I'm going to make a cup of coffee or tea. I'm going to sit outside or in whatever place you find safe for yourself. And I'm just going to be, I may just set a timer for five minutes. And for five minutes, may I just be and listen and figure out what I need. And then may I honor myself by trying to give myself even a small piece of what I need. Rest, a good meal, a night with friends just to have fun. Whatever it is you need, honor it. It's very important and it makes the rest of life so much easier. So self-honoring is absolutely essential, and there's a lot of reasons, but I'm ultimately just going to talk about three of those. So the first one is a lot of us have this deep desire to be there for others, to help others, to be part of a community, to be part of a tribe, to help make the life of others easier. Your cup has to be full before you try to fill up the cup of another. So if you're running on empty, you don't have any gas to give other people. Self-honoring is the key way to listen to yourself, to listen to your body, and to get what you need in order to actually be able to help others. So when we give to others, and you've heard me say this before, it should be out of abundance. And that abundance comes by making sure your needs are met first. You have to meet your needs before you can meet the needs of others. And honoring yourself is making sure those needs are met before you try to meet those needs of other people. The second thing is self-honoring. It leads to peace. It leads to calm. It leads to flow. We all strive to have that calmness, that peace, that knowing deep within us that we are okay, we are safe, we are loved, we have all we need. And that does not mean financial. That could be part of it. That could be a piece of it. But like, I am here to tell you, you could be the richest person in the world and you're not magically going to have your needs met by that. That's not how this works. You may have some needs met, but that's not where you're going to find peace. That's not where you're going to find calm and belonging a knowing that you're living out your purpose, that comes after you self-honor. So if you're just frantically on this hamster wheel, running and running and running and doing and doing and doing and hoping that one day you're going to get to where you're trying to go, that's not how it works. I innocently, just like you, used to think that. Well, if I tried harder, if I worked harder, if I got a better job, or if I spent more time and energy in the gym, it could even be innocent things like increasing your health. It doesn't matter how much time you spend in the gym. It doesn't matter how much time you walk or you run or you do cardio. It doesn't matter how healthy you eat if at the end of the day, you're not honoring yourself because then those things They just become more items on your to-do list that you can't do perfectly and you can't do right, which adds stress. And when that stress builds up in your body and you're not giving yourself what you truly need, and yes, your body does need healthy food. Yes, your body does need exercise. But you have to listen to your body because what your best friend needs doesn't mean that's what you need. If your best friend does CrossFit or your best friend runs marathons, That's maybe what their body needs. Or honestly, they may be ignoring their body and just doing what they feel like they're supposed to do that will bring them happiness or success. If you listen to your body and what your body needs and you honor that, then you'll know. 
that's where flow comes in. And flow is simply just listening to yourself and knowing the next step in that present moment that you need to take in order to honor yourself, to honor your body, to honor your needs. And it may be, wow, I feel like I really need to go get something to eat. And I feel like it needs to be something healthy. Or whether it's a, I'm really tired of honoring 24 seven, this diet and holding myself to such a regimen in hopes of losing weight. I am going to go have the freaking cheeseburger. It's okay to do that every now and then it's okay. Like you have to listen to your body and you have to honor what you need. And if your body's saying, yeah, okay, just give me the cheeseburger. Just, just give me a break. Then it needs a break. It's longing for that break. And I would ask yourself, especially if you're in the habit of eating healthy and you find that if you eat that cheeseburger, it's going to make you feel bad later. Ask yourself, okay, I'm craving this cheeseburger right now. Hmm. What do I really need? What is my body really searching for? Is it needing a nutritious meal? Is it needing a break from the chaos, from all the pressure that the society places on me, that my family places on me, that I place on myself most importantly? And if so, listen, again, sacred Paul, sacred silence. What does your body truly need under the surface when you go innocently to grab that junk food or to grab that drink or to grab that substance or to reach out to a friend because you feel like the only way you're going to get whatever you need in that moment is to have a friend nearby. When you're frantically searching for stuff like that, you're not in flow. You're not in your truth. You're not in your authenticity innocently. The way to get back to that authenticity and to that flow is to stop, to breathe, to listen, and then to honor yourself in that moment. The third part of the essentialness of self-healing through self-honoring is that as part of self-love, it is simple. You honor those you love or you try very hard to honor those you love. How much more important then is it for you to honor yourself? If you're trying to love yourself more, which we've been talking about for many episodes now, how important that is. It's crucial. It's key. It's essential. In order to love yourself, you have to honor yourself. And sometimes that may be putting up boundaries. Sometimes that may be saying no. Just saying, nope, I don't want to do that. That doesn't feel right to me. And that's going to be different for you and your body and your circumstance and your situation. And you have to listen to figure that out. And the last part of the section I want to leave you with is then you have to forgive yourself when you default back into old habits and you stop self-honoring. And this happens to me. This happens to everyone. There's nobody I know that this doesn't happen to on occasions is remembering, oh, crap, I'm doing that thing again. I'm not honoring myself. When's the last time I've stopped and listened to my body? to figure out what I need, to take the action step to actually honor myself. And then you forgive yourself when that happens. You forgive yourself. You do not go to shame. You do not go to guilt. You do not beat yourself up. You forgive yourself compassionately and lovingly. And then you begin again. And that's your path. That's what that's the path you're going to go on. That's what you're going to experience just by living as a human you're going to mess up. You're going to forget. You're going to default into old patterns. And may you have patience, love, and kindness for yourself to be thankful that you recognize it so that you can get back on track. And you're going to come off track a lot. That's just the nature of this work. And that's okay. Accept yourself for where you are. Forgive yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. All those episodes... And if you haven't listened to the episodes two, three, and four, go back and listen to them. They're really important in the whole journey to self-love. And self-honoring is a key part of that. But you can't honor yourself without that patience, love, and acceptance. There are some misconceptions about self-honoring, which are just so similar to the misconceptions about 
self-love and self-compassion. And I'll just say it again because it's so important for us to hear this. Self-honoring is not selfish. It is literally the best thing you can do for yourself and everyone around you. Because imagine how you're going to show up in the world when your glass is full. When you have excess flowing out of you. The love that you give is so free. It comes from flow. It comes from ease. It's not selfish. It's the best thing you can do for yourself and for others. And it also doesn't mean you disregard others. You don't get to go through life like a wrecking ball. Whenever you're honoring yourself, you do so in compassion for the other person as well, in love for the other person as well, and understanding for that other person. And I have a lot of stories, a lot of really hard stories that I will share about that in future episodes. Today, when I'm sharing my path to self-honoring, I really want to talk about a, a simple area. And this involves my career. This involves my job, my livelihood. And so it looks like for me, self-compassion for myself and for others who may not accept in that moment what I'm asking for and what I need. It looks like honoring myself and I default back into the old patterns just like everybody else. And sometimes it takes me being in between a rock and a hard place before I realize, crap, I'm doing that thing again where I'm not honoring myself. I'm not asking for what I need. And the beautiful thing about this is although this does not come easy for me most days still, after years of really hard healing work. And even though this is something I still have to be intentional about every single day of my life, sometimes multiple moments throughout every single day of my life, I know for a fact, because I have seen it now as proof in the lives of others and as myself, when you honor yourself, the universe shows up. What the hell does that even mean? What does it mean that the universe shows up? And when I say the universe, I mean, God, your experiences outside of you, the reflection, because everything around you is ultimately a reflection back to you for you to learn from and for you to grow from. And that changes when you start showing up for yourself, when you start honoring yourself. So I'm going to share a couple of experiences of what that's looked like for me. And some of this is very recent, like within the last couple of weeks recent. The first one is I had a consulting client um, reach out to me and they wanted me to do this consulting gig. And I didn't at that time actually need the money. And I wanted the gig really badly. I wanted to be consulting more. I was getting burnout on just researching mostly in my academic career, researching and somewhat teaching, but mostly just the research side of things. And I was like, if I'm going to be doing this consulting thing, which is going to bring me life, which is honoring to me, what does it need to look like? And I was like, I cannot give more than 15 hours a week. And for those 15 hours, I want to be paid really, really well for it. And normally I would have sent an email back to this person who was asking about my rates and my time and my availability. And I would have apologized and said, hey, I'm really sorry if I'm asking for too much, if I even would have asked for what I needed, but this is what I'm asking for and I'm flexible, right? So that's the thing we always say is like, I need this, but I'm flexible. What do you need? How can I make sure I'm meeting your needs? But when we do that, we're not honoring ourselves. It's that simple. So I sent this email back and I said, I'm only available up to 15 hours a week. I need that to be very flexible around my full time, what I call my real job, which is being a professor. And I can't commit to last minute meetings. I need to know well in advance. And these are the days of the week that I'm teaching. I'm in the classroom and I'm not available. And this is how much it's going to cost. And let me tell you, That rate that I requested was higher than what I normally request. 
much higher than what I normally request. And this person came back to me and he said, yes, he honored every single thing that I said. And I even gave him a range and he came back at the very top number of that range that I would need to make in order to make this happen. That is what happens when we show up and honor ourselves and state what we need very kindly and honestly, but without, it's not without flexibility, but it's without wiggling back and forth. It's with confidence. It's with a surety. And if he would have said no, I wouldn't have worked with that client. And I, it took a while for me to get to that, a long while for me to get to that. And most recently, this happened again. Also, I'll share career-wise. I'll share more about the personal, not career, relational aspects of this in future episodes. But for today, I just wanted to stick to the very practicality of things that everyone would be able to understand in some ways. So for my current job, I'm a professor and I absolutely love teaching. It is something that is very very, very much part of my calling and who I am, something that affected my life very deeply when I was in college. And I I love it. And I love teaching in various aspects. That is now transpiring onto a podcast, um, granted in a very different and more authentic and vulnerable way. But it's still sharing and teaching and trying to help others see a little differently and gain different experiences so that they can have a better life and live more in their truth and their honoring and capacity. With that being said, and I will say I very much respect people that love research, that love the thrill of doing scientific research and that go into theories and enjoy data collection and analyzing data and coming up with conclusions based on that data and practical implications and research implications. And I think it's important for society as a whole. I think it's important to our respective industries. I think it's also important and relevant in the classroom. I think that research is important for people who are supposed to be doing research. And the ironic part is is for a long time, I thought if I was good at something, it means I was supposed to be doing it. And that's just not true for me. (laughs) That's not true at all. I am pretty good at research and I do not like doing it. I found that that is against flow. That feels like trying to run uphill as opposed to jogging slowly, gently downhill. And I really did not love the need to put academic research behind a paywall that removed its access to the general public and businesses and organizations, specifically in marketing, because that's the area that I live in, that I teach in, that I research in, that I consult in, that wasn't going to be practically applied to businesses and was taking a very long time to be published, which means it was taking a long time to get out there, which is kind of funny because when it comes to this podcast, I, I want to say I'm a recovering perfectionist. I almost said I'm a perfectionist, but I'm not anymore. And I almost said I used to be a perfectionist, but there are times when those habits come back into play for me. So I'll just say I'm a recovering perfectionist. And it was hard for me. And I worked with my sound guy on this to release the first several episodes without like the best sound quality and not feeling the need to go back and re-record with like the most professional equipment. And I'm like, nope. That's perfectionism at play. I'm putting this stuff out there because it needs to be out there now. It doesn't need to be out there six months from now. Whenever my sound is better and it's more professional, like whatever. I, I just can't care about that stuff anymore. And so in the research side of things, it was, I didn't want to wait for a year and a half for the damn thing to go through the publication process, which I think is a bunch of red tape and it has its validity. It's just not for me. And so I thought, well, my job at the university involves research. That is literally part of my contract. And I thought I was going to have to leave university in the university setting. 
and a person who is to respect their their identity. I'm not going to share too much. A person who is now in a role directly above me um, in my department at my university came to me and I shared with him authentically and vulnerably about where I was. And he said, give me a shot to make this right. Give me a chance because you're valuable. You're worthy. We love you and want you here. These are words that I had longed to hear all my life. And note how I did not hear them until I started honoring myself. He literally said the most healing words to me after I chose to honor myself and consider leaving my very stable job with very good benefits, with retirement, with students, which I love teaching. And he did. He came back and asked me, again, asking me, not telling me, asking me, what would you need to stay? What would you need to make this happen? And I told him the number. I told him the number of courses I'd be willing to teach. I told him what I would like to do in the time that I wouldn't be teaching the courses. And I asked for no research requirement. And what happened? Exactly that. A new contract without research requirement, allowing me to teach the number of classes I want to teach that feels healthy to me and to my body and to my soul and to my spirit with additional things that are aligned for me or would flow with me and that feels right for me. And this is something that I asked for a year and a half ago and I was told it wasn't possible. But when I asked, I didn't ask with confidence. I didn't ask with commitment to myself. I didn't ask with that commitment to, if this doesn't happen, I have to choose me and I'm gonna have to find something else. When I asked the first time, it was out of fear. And when we ask out of fear, we're not honoring ourselves. And dear ones, I know how hard that is to hear. (laughs) I know how hard from deep experiences it is to live, but it's true. So when I showed up and said what I wanted to do versus what I didn't want to do, what I needed versus what I didn't need. And let me be clear, this came with flexibility. Like this wasn't a, this is what I want. And if I don't get this, I'm out. That's not what this was. This was a conversation. It was a communicational needs on both sides and a mutual agreement and understanding of what that could look like. So I share that to say, I know it's hard to start honoring yourself when you never have. I know how insanely difficult that is, especially on a personal level and how painful that can be and how hurtful that can be and how hard that can be. And I also know how freeing it could be, how beautiful it can be, how your life can change, truly change because of it, how you can find that peace within the storm, that calm within the chaos. And so I'm here to tell you it's possible. And as you honor yourself, as you start to honor yourself, the universe God, source, yourself, society, the people around you, it all starts to meet you where you are. It truly does. And it may not come swiftly. And some of my experiences, it took a year and a half to come. And I do promise I'll share more about those. And then some of my experiences like these took weeks, weeks. And sometimes it's instantaneous. And the more you honor yourself, the easier and easier it becomes over time. So as always, I want to leave you with some ways to get started. I would recommend you choose one thing to honor yourself every single day. And what you may have to do, and this is what I had to do at the beginning, is to create a feel-good list. A list of what feels good to you. So I'll just share with you some of the items on my list because it may prove to be beneficial for you for your list. So being under a weighted blanket is on my to-do list, my feel-good list, my self-care list. Lighting a candle and just sitting in the darkness and staring at the flicker of that flame, it can be so grounding, so calming. 
My feel good list also involves a lot of low light. So that may either just be natural sunlight or turning off these bright fluorescent lights that I do not resonate with at all. Right now I'm recording in low light with a very, very light lamp, a candle and the sunlight coming from my windows. And that's it. It's just calming. It's peaceful to my soul and to my spirit. And that's what I need. You may need something completely different. My feel good list also tends to involve music without words, which that's really, it took a while for me to get there because I love music. But I find that when my system is overactive, and we're going to talk more about regulating your nervous system another day, but when my system is overactive, I need calm, gentle music without words because the words can be overstimulating. And I have to get somewhere quiet, ideally in nature. My feel good list may involve reading a book. It may be taking a bath, a candlelight bath, or taking a shower. It may be going and sitting outside and just having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and enjoying that moment, even if it's for five minutes. Whatever it is that makes you feel good, add it to your feel good list and choose one thing from that every single day. So I have to remind you from previous episodes, that means you have to get still and you have to get quiet to find out what you need. And then you just go through that feel good list and say, does this feel good? Does this feel good? And your body will answer. You'll get a gut feeling of a yes or no when you do this. So that tends to involve, again, if you're not used to being in your body, setting alarms on your phone. So in previous episodes, I shared that I had slash I still have them. They're still set. They still go off. So my friends laugh like an alarm will go off and we'll be at dinner. <laughs> and my friends will be like, it's 830. I'm like, yes, it is because those alarms are still on my phone. I don't typically go through the very structured process anymore, but they're good reminders for me. And I also just like that it kind of helps me break up the day now. Like I tend to know what time it is most of the time because of those alarms. But set those alarms on your phone, whatever times work for you, and ask yourself when they go off, how do I feel right now? And listen for the answer. Where do I feel it in my body? What do I need right now? What resources, which are maybe on your feel good list, do I have available to meet that need? And then you remind yourself that you are worthy of love, patience, kindness, and self-honoring. You are worthy of taking those five minutes to give yourself what you need. You're worthy of it. And I know for me, when I first got it started, when someone would ask me, like, how do I feel? Or I'd ask myself, how do I feel right now? It was so hard for me. Like, I didn't have words. Like, I feel like, for me, the number of emotions that I had to pull from when I began this process was like five. It was five, like the basic five emotions, and I couldn't get beyond those. So I'm going to share in the show notes an emotion will that I seriously saved on my phone. And when I would do this activity three times a day, when I would ask how I'd feel, I am not kidding you guys. I would sit there regardless of where I was and I would pull this emotion will up on my phone and I would zoom in and I would go around that emotion will until I found the feeling that resonated with what I felt. And it may be five things on that list, maybe five things on that will, but it was important. It was so important for me to get more grounded in my body and again, be gentle with yourself because take it slow. It, it can become a shock to your system when you first start doing this. And that's okay. Again, patience, kindness, and love. So as we start to wrap up this episode, I wanted to leave you with one more quote. And this is a quote by Robert Q. Respect yourself enough to walk away from anything that no longer serves you, grows you, or makes you happy. That has been a huge part of my story. And we're going to talk a lot more about walking away from things. But for now, thinking back to what I was sharing about my path, you have to be willing to walk away from it if it's not honoring you, whether that's a relationship or a job, whether that's putting boundaries up with your parents, with your kids, with your siblings, with your partner, whoever it is. You have to respect yourself enough to walk away 
from anything that no longer serves you. And it's when you do that, that God, source, the universe will bring in new things that are honoring to you. You make space for new things to come in. So may you move forward on your self-honoring journey with patience, love, and kindness. And that's all for today's episode on self-honoring. Please remember to check out the show notes for tools and resources on the topics, as well as that emotions will. And thank you so much for listening. We are so incredibly glad that you're here. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Energetic Pathway podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and one day when Google allows us into the Google Podcast, we'll also be there. Choose to honor yourself today. Go forward. Have a good day. And until next time, my friends.